Well, hello and welcome to this English lesson where I'm going to talk about good luck and bad luck or what we call superstitions in English. Um first off, I should tell you that I am not a superstitious person. I don't really believe in good luck and bad luck but in this lesson, we'll look at a number of things that people believe bring good luck. That means that your day is gonna go well if you have good luck uh, and things that people believe bring bad luck. So, anyways, welcome to this English lesson about superstitions. I hope you enjoy it. Before we get started though, just a few things. First of all, just hi to Todd and Dave who are here in the chat moderating. Thanks for being here, guys. Um they will share a link that you can use if you want to ask a question during the lesson. The second thing is please use the chat for good friendly English conversation. That's already started and it's good to see. It's a great place to practice a little bit of English along the way. I do wanna give a shout out as well to Brent from American English with this guy. He was hanging out with us for a bit. He I'm pretty sure he's teaching now. Both Brent and I have full-time teaching jobs so I'm sure he's off. Actually, I see him in the chat still so that's cool. You should check out his channel from time to time as well. Um and I just wanna say hi to all of my members. Uh it's cool to see all of you guys. Thank you so much for being here and supporting my channel. But let's get started. Superstitions. Here's the definition that I found. So, please don't leave because this is a very complicated definition. A superstition is a widely held but unjustified belief in supernatural causation leading to certain consequences of an action or event. Let me simplify that for you. A superstition is when you believe if one thing happens, something else is going to happen, okay? Maybe you believe that if the sun is shining when you walk out your door that you will have a joyful day. There's no real scientific evidence for that but there are certain things that people believe. They believe that certain things will happen if something else happens. Here's what I do wanna say about this lesson though. It will be a very North American lesson. It will probably be somewhat European. I know that superstitions around the world are very different for different people and cultures, okay? So, you may not see some of your superstitions but you'll see some of mine. Um why am I doing a lesson on superstitions today? Why do you think that is? I'm just gonna pause briefly before I say, hmm, why am I doing this lesson today? Anybody have any idea? You can put it in the chat. I'm doing a lesson on superstitions because it is Friday the 13th. I'll talk a little bit more about that later. Um every once in a while, a Friday ends up being the 13th of the month on the calendar um and that has certain, I guess, consequences. Is that in here? Causation and consequences. If you are someone who believes in superstitions, if you believe in good luck and bad luck, we say that you are superstitious, okay? As I said, I am not a superstitious person but I think everyone in the world is a little bit superstitious. Um so, if you are someone who believes in superstitions, we would describe you as being superstitious. Those are hard words to say, aren't they? Let me back up. Superstitions, superstitions and superstitious. So, there you go. So, let's talk a little bit about good luck. Good luck is when things go your way. Um we actually use this phrase a lot in English when someone is going to do something. If someone says, I'm going to go and take a driver's test, we say good luck. If someone says they are going to maybe uh, go on a long trip but they're afraid of flying. We might say good luck. No, we probably wouldn't say it then. That's that's a bad example. <laughs> Definitely before someone writes a test, we would say good luck. We actually don't say good luck though to actors who are going to perform a play. We usually say break a leg because it's considered bad luck to say good luck to an actor before they perform a play on the stage. Kind of strange, isn't it? So, Bad luck is then the opposite. Bad luck is when uh you just have things go wrong throughout your day. Um and we do use these phrases in English quite a bit. We can say things like, oh, I had a little bit of good luck today. Um I found some money on the ground or I had some bad luck today. I got in a car accident. So, even though I said I wasn't superstitious, I would as an English speaker use the phrases good luck and bad luck quite regularly. 
If someone said to me, oh, I was late for work and then my tire on my car was flat, I would say, oh, that's some bad luck. Um so again, even though I'm not superstitious, as an English speaker, I still use these terms quite regularly. Um so, let's start with the number 13. In different cultures and different countries, different numbers can mean good luck or bad luck. In my country in Canada and in North America and in parts of Europe, I know the number 13 is considered bad luck. In fact, we don't use the number 13 sometimes. It would be rare for you to see an athlete wearing the number 13. Most athletes would prefer not to wear it. Some will boldly wear the number 13 but the number 13 is considered bad luck. So, often people will avoid using it. They'll avoid using it on a shirt if they play on a sports team. Sometimes in a hotel, there is no room number 13. It will sometimes be called room 12A um, and some buildings I think don't have a 13th floor. Very interesting. Very, very superstitious. Um Let me see here. I just need to check my audio. I haven't done that yet. Looks like everything is working great. That's awesome. So, because the number 13, because the number 13 is considered bad luck by some, Friday the 13th has become a day that's kind of a funny day. People don't enjoy Friday the 13th sometimes. They think maybe That it's a day where lots of bad things will happen to them. Um but I would say 99% of people don't actually think about it, okay? But why do I have a motorcycle in this picture? Where I live, the road I live on, on Friday the 13th, there will be lots of motorcycles going by. In my area, every Friday the 13th, there is a motorcycle ride and everyone goes to a city called Port Dover. Many, many years ago, um there was a motorcycle accident and I think a man passed away in the accident and I think it was on Friday the 13th or close to it. So, every Friday the 13th to commemorate, to remember this person, uh many, many motorcycles go by. I don't hear any today. Um because of COVID, there's probably going to be less of them but uh Friday the 13th is considered bad luck but they've taken the day and turned it into something positive. Hey, John has become a member. Thank you, John, so much for joining my channel and becoming a member and helping to support the things that I do. You're awesome. Welcome. Um so, Brent from American English with this guy referenced this one earlier. We have a phrase in English. If you step like step on a crack, break your mother's back. It sounds horrible. It's a horrible phrase. But some people when they walk along sidewalks, they will try not to step on cracks, okay? So, as you walk along a sidewalk, there are cracks. Some people will avoid stepping on a crack because they think it's bad luck and like I said, we have this funny little phrase. You'll sometimes hear children say it and the phrase is step on a crack, break your mother's back. Um it's kind of a strange phrase and uh obviously, if you think about it, stepping on a crack is in no way going to cause your mother to injure, get injured. That's just not going to happen. Uh Brent's given me a super chat. Thank you so much, Brent, for that. Says, I must go but have a great chat. You too, Brent. Thanks for hanging out and uh, have a great day teaching. Um don't step on any cracks, man. (laughs) Um the next one, this one's not as common. Some of the things I'm going to talk about you might see in uh movies or on TV or you might read about in books but generally, we don't talk about these things or fear these things as much as you might think and the next one is walking under a ladder. It's considered bad luck to walk under a ladder. If you are walking (laughs) along the sidewalk, it's considered bad luck by some people to step on a crack and it would be bad luck to walk under a ladder. Um myself, I would simply not walk under a ladder because it's dangerous. (laughs) If you walk under a ladder, there's a chance something might fall on you. So, uh don't step on a crack or don't walk under a ladder. Both considered by some to be bad luck. Uh opening an umbrella indoors. So, when you're in a house, it's considered bad luck to open an umbrella. Um I'll be honest. 
I don't use an umbrella very much. Um, I know umbrellas are very popular in countries where it rains a lot. Um, I have an umbrella. I don't use it very often. Even if it's raining and I need to go to work, I just run to my van and jump in and go to work. I don't usually have an umbrella with me. I don't need to walk outside in the rain very often. Um and then a black cat. So, it's considered bad luck if a black cat crosses your path. So, that would mean I think I would have bad luck all the time. We have a couple black cats that cross my path regularly when I go outside but for some, they think that if a black cat walks in front of them that that would be bad luck. Um I'm not so sure. Um when I was a kid, we had lots of cats as well. I had a cat that was black that was my friend that was my pet um and I'm sure that didn't cause any bad luck but some people think that a black cat uh crossing your path is bad luck. And then we have of course, breaking a mirror. It's considered I think seven years bad luck if you break a mirror. That's the the idea uh, that if you break a mirror somehow magically (laughs) you will have seven years of bad luck if you break a mirror. I don't know um how these came about. I don't have the history of why these are considered bad luck uh but certainly uh just to quickly review um let me go back quick. The number 13 bad luck. Stepping on a crack considered bad luck. Walking under a ladder. Opening an umbrella indoors. A black cat and breaking a mirror. Hey, let's look at some questions. Let me get my question feed running up and running. I know some of you will have answered or asked (laughs) I hope you didn't answer them. Some of you will have um asked questions already. Um let's see here. First question is from Mary the Iranian. Morning, teacher Bob. In your opinion, what's the main mentality behind all these superstitious things that human beings have made up so far? Thank you. Have a peaceful Friday. So, I did correct a few things in there, Mary um but great question. I don't know what it is. Um I think that people are filled with curiosity and there's a lot of mystery in the world and it's not easy to understand why certain things happen. So, I think people start to believe things. Um they start to believe that if they don't do their morning routine right, they'll have bad luck that day and other little things like that. So, Mary, I'm not sure where it came about. Um we obviously have superstitions. We also have many world religions. People really like to believe in things and so that uh I think that desire to believe sometimes gives rise to different ways of thinking. Let's see here. Ruslan, hello, teacher Bob. How are you? What is the most popular superstition among the Canadians? Do you believe it? Best wishes, dear teacher. So, I'll tell you, I'll I'll talk about this a bit later, Ruslan but I think one of the most popular superstitions is what's called the playoff beard. If you watch hockey, many hockey players when they are in the playoffs, when they are trying to get into the championship, they'll grow a beard and they won't shave until after they lose or win the championship. I think that is probably one of the most popular uh ones. Let's see here. Um Athanasios. Hey, Athanasios. Hope you're doing well over there. Um by the way, hello to the 384 people watching. Welcome to this English lesson on good luck and bad luck. Uh if you're new here, there is a subscribe button there that you can click and become a subscriber to my channel. Athanasios though says, hello, teacher. How is it going? Have you (laughs) have you planned this lesson because of the date or did it just happen? Thanks. So, I was looking at my list of ideas and I was like, oh, I don't know what idea to I don't know what lesson to do. I had four or five ideas for today and then I was walking out to talk to Jen and a motorcycle went by. This was on Wednesday and I thought, oh, it's the 11th today. That means Friday is gonna be Friday the 13th and motorcycles are gonna go by and I thought, okay, I'm gonna do a lesson on superstitions on Friday the 13th. So, that's how it came about. Uh let's see here. Bento, hi, Bob. Do you have any superstition before you start the live stream? Thanks and have a nice day. So, I don't have any superstitions, Bento but I regularly get up early and I test everything once 
before I do a live stream. I don't do that for good luck. I do that because I think it's a practical thing to do and it also reassures me that everything is working. So, I actually do a small mini test live stream before the real one. You could say that maybe I'm a little bit superstitious. Um sometimes it's hard to distinguish between superstition and simply being practical. So, good question though. Um let's see here. Renata says, hello, in my humble opinion, I don't believe superstitions are real but people have their own beliefs and whatnot. Be well, sir. Thank you for the lesson. So, it's an interesting thing because there are people that firmly believe in certain things and others that would rather have a scientific explanation but I think again, one of the reasons there are so many superstitions is because the world is still very mysterious. It's not always easy to use science to predict things. So, I think people rely a little more on superstitions. Good. Just doing a little audio check there. Good to have everybody here. Hey, I did wanna mention um I had a really cool interview with Rod, the Brazilian English teacher. He is in the chat. He has a YouTube channel with the same name uh and tomorrow he'll have part two out on his channel. So, if you didn't watch part one, search for Rod, the Brazilian English teacher sometime today on YouTube and watch that one if you're interested and uh look for the next one tomorrow. Um let's see here. Modine. Hi, Mr. Bob. What's your take on luck? Do you think that things can bring you bad or good luck or do you feel it's a concept that doesn't exist created by humans to fool themselves? I don't know. I'll tell you a funny story, Modine. At a certain point when I was a kid, whenever I went up a flight of stairs, I wanted it to be exactly 10 steps. So, I would if there were 12 steps, I would skip to so that it would be 10 steps when I got to the top. I did that as a child. I don't do that anymore as an adult but I'm not sure why I did that. I think I did it because I thought it brought me good luck. It was just a weird little thing that I did as a kid. So, I don't know. What's my take on luck? I think people have funny little beliefs and I think that's okay. Whether they are actually true or not, I don't know. (laughs) Henry from Taiwan uh says, Hi, teacher Bob. Do you believe in walking under a ladder will carry bad luck? Thank you. No. Um as I said, I think walking under a ladder is just a bad idea. I think that if I'm up on a ladder, I'm usually working on something. I probably have a hammer or a can of paint and a paintbrush. So, I wouldn't walk under a ladder. Um I don't think it's bad luck. I just think it's a bad idea (laughs) because something might fall and hit you on the head. Let's see here. Um let me get to the next question. Um here we go. Isam says, good morning teacher Bob. What's the difference between fortune and luck and how to pronounce these two resembling words, lack and luck? So, fortune and luck are very similar. If you have good fortune or you have good luck, it means the same thing. If you bought a lottery ticket and you won, we might say, oh, that he had some good fortune or he had good luck. Luck is a little more common but they mean the same. Uh and then when you don't have enough of something, you lack it. So, lack, L-A-C-K and then if you win something, we say, oh, that was some that was some good luck. You had good luck there. Uh let me do one more question and we will get back to the lesson. Corey from France says, hi, Bob. So, pleased to be here again. Do you have any objects that are said to bring good luck in your home such as horseshoes? Mine is in my wallet, a lovely four leaf clover. So, we do not have anything in our home but you mentioned horseshoes and I'll talk about horseshoes in a bit. There used to be on our barn, there used to be a horseshoe over one of the doors. I don't think it's there now but it used to be very common uh for farmers to put a horseshoe uh, above a door uh for good luck. Anyways, let me see here. Should I do one more question? I'll do one more question and then I will get back to the lesson. I think I said that already but bear with me. Um Rod, the Brazilian English teacher says, good morning, Mr. Bob. Hope you're well. I'm not much superstitious. However, I avoid going under a ladder. Do you have superstitions for the new year? Thanks as always. So, I don't think there's any superstitions related to the start of the new year. 
Um, I'll have to research that. I don't have any in my lesson. Um, I do know there's superstitions around weddings and I'll talk about those in a little bit. Um, but generally, the new year, um, yeah, people make a new year's resolution and then they usually don't keep it. A resolution is when you promise yourself to do something. Uh, good question though, Rod. I will have to look into that one. Hey, let's look at a few things that people consider good luck. So, we looked at bad luck. We looked at a broken mirror walking under a ladder. Let's look at a few things that are considered good luck. So, clover is a plant that grows in many parts of the world. That's not the greatest picture and normally clover has three leaves, okay? But sometimes you can find a clover that has four leaves on it and it's considered good luck. I found a four leaf clover once when I was a kid on the playground at school. I was so excited but normally every single little clover um plant has three leaves but if you can find one with four leaves, it's considered good luck. Sometimes people pick a three leaf clover and then they take a leaf from another clover and they put it together and then they pretend it's a four leaf clover. That's not very funny but anyways, a four leaf clover can be considered good luck and as I think it was Corey mentioned, if you find one, people sometimes keep them. Uh let me just double check. Pretty sure that question was from Corey J. Yes, a four leaf clover. That's right. So, sometimes when people find something like a four leaf clover, they'll keep it. Maybe they'll put it in a book or keep it in their wallet um because they think it will bring them good luck. So, we talked about the number 13 and there's also the number seven. Some people have their own lucky number. Some people have their favorite number. The number seven is considered good luck in most places in North America. Some people consider the number eight good luck as well but just as I mentioned that 13 was considered bad luck, for some people, the number seven is considered good luck. We talked a little bit about horseshoes. So, if you are a person who likes horses, if you are familiar with horses, you'll know that horses have horseshoes. It's a small metal piece of it's a small piece of metal that's in a curved shape that gets put on the bottom of the horse's hooves and sometimes people will hang a horseshoe up for good luck. It's fairly common still on some farms to see a horseshoe somewhere. Like I said, when I was a kid, there was a horseshoe above one of the doors of our barn. Um it's pretty common for people, especially people who have horses and might have an extra horseshoe laying around. It's pretty common for them to hang one up somewhere to put it on a post like in this picture uh or to put it on the uh, wall of the barn. Um by the way, in when it comes to good numbers for good luck and bad luck, in some cultures, the number 13 might be good luck and the number seven might be bad luck. It's kind of arbitrary. When something's arbitrary, it can be one meaning or the other. Um we have a phrase in English, knock on wood and people do this because they don't want to if you say something out loud that you want to be true, people will often say, well, knock on wood because they sometimes think saying it out loud means it won't happen. Um so, sometimes you'll hear people say something like uh well, I hope the team uh wins the championship knock on wood. So, they wanna knock on wood to kind of I guess bring good luck or to uh actually make things happen the way they want them to happen. Kind of a weird phrase but we do say it. Um even people like me say it sometimes. Like, I hope this live stream goes well knock on wood. Um we have this uh action um in Canada and this is very very common. People will often cross their fingers if they want something to happen, okay? So, if you really really want to um let's say you really want to win a contest. You'll say, well, I've entered a contest and I'm just crossing my fingers. I hope I win um or people will say um you know, there's one minute left in the game. Cross your fingers. So, it's kind of this action that people do to kind of bring good luck um 
I see Al Gore saying a horseshoe should be end upwards. Then it looks like a cup of plenty. Interesting. I didn't know that, Al. I don't regularly hang horseshoes up uh, or know the proper way to do it. But anyways, yes, we often uh, will cross our fingers or we'll say cross your fingers when we're trying to win something um, or when we want someone else to win something. Um, and then this one's kind of weird. Um, I only put this one in because you will see this on TV and in movies sometimes. Someone might have a rabbit's foot. Honestly, I think it's kind of a strange one to have the foot of an animal but this is considered good luck. Um, I don't consider it good luck. I can like I said, I consider it kind of strange. I'm not sure why someone would want a rabbit's foot in their pocket but some people think that a rabbit's foot brings good luck. And they will carry one around with them. So, I do know a person who has a rabbit's foot. So, it's not as strange as you might think and it's not as uncommon as you might think. Um and then this one, yeah, I've never done but apparently uh sometimes chefs in the kitchen, they'll throw salt over their left shoulder and I think it's just for good luck. I think in the world, in the religious world, if you believe in the devil or in um you know, I how would you describe this? I think it's to to get so the devil can't see you. I think that's why you throw salt over your shoulder. I've never done this because (laughs) I don't wanna clean the salt up later. I think it's silly to throw something over your shoulder that you just have to sweep up and clean up later. So, I personally uh, would not throw salt over my shoulder to ward off evil spirits uh, or to bring good luck. So, I'm sure some people would. Hey, um give me one sec here. We're gonna do some questions but I'm gonna turn on uh I'm gonna switch the live chat so that members can ask questions directly in the chat. So, we are at the point. Let's see here. We are at the point where if you are a member, first of all, thank you very much for being a member of my channel. You guys are awesome. Uh if you are interested in becoming a member, there is a join button below that you can use to join. Uh and as a member during live streams, uh one of the perks you get is you can ask questions directly in the chat while I'm doing each lesson. I do a live lesson every Friday and Saturday um and I just wanna say thank you again to all my members. You guys are awesome. Thank you for supporting me. So, if you have a question, go ahead and ask it. I'm gonna take Ario's question right here. Ario says, hola, Mr. Bob. My question is, what's the difference between good luck and break a leg? Thank you. So, particularly for actors, people who act on a stage in a play, when they are about to do their show, it's considered bad luck to say good luck to them. We don't say good luck to actors. We usually say break a leg. We don't actually want them to break their leg and it's really the same as saying good luck. It's just a different way of saying it because there is a suspicion or a superstition in the theater that saying good luck will bring bad luck. So, we don't say good luck to people who are acting. Norma welcomes Thomas. Excellent. Thank you very much. Alexi says, I have only one superstition. I watch all of Bob's new lessons before I go to bed. Oh, and one more thing. It will be a good luck if you read a notification that Bob the Canadian likes your comment. Yeah, I try to read and reply and heart to as many comments as I can. I hope that you don't think it's bad luck if I don't get a chance to do that. Lately, there has been far too many comments for me to answer them all but Alexi, thank you very much. Sam the Taiwanese says, hi, teacher Bob. If a person who doesn't believe in the ghost or soul exists in this world, are they considered not a superstitious person? Is that right? We would say that if you don't believe in spirits or ghosts or what we call the supernatural, we would say that you're not superstitious. Exactly. And you would probably be described as very scientific or logical. Okay. So, a superstitious person believes in magic and spirits and things that are otherworldly or supernatural. A scientific person believes in the scientific method and proving everything's with everything with facts. I'm much more scientific by the way. Key Park says, in our old tradition here, if you get your hair cut in the first month in a Luna year, you will have bad luck. I think that's kind of like 
to let the barber stop working and get rest. So that's interesting. I think sometimes superstitions may be created because they have what's called ulterior motives. There's another reason why that is a superstition. That's an interesting one, Key Park. Thank you. Uh, Corey J says, Bob, have you heard about ladybugs is an indication of good harvest? So, I read about that one last night when I was researching. I didn't include it because that was new to me. I had not heard about that but here's what I'll tell you. For Jen and I, we love ladybugs because ladybugs actually eat bad insects. So, ladybugs even though I'm not superstitious, it it's actually a scientific sign that your plants are gonna do better because ladybugs, they eat aphids and other insects. Very cool. Zeev says, in Judaism, 13 is good luck. So, there we go. Some numbers in different cultures and religions and parts of the world can mean different things. Julia says, hi, dear teacher. I wonder if Canadians have any superstitions according to money. For instance, put a small coin on the floor near the front door. Julia, not that I know of. Although it can be considered good luck to find money, especially if you find something like a penny. When I was doing my research last night, I read a little bit about superstitions around money. Some people will keep the first dollar they ever made. They'll put it on the wall and that's considered good luck. Uh, Some people, if they find a coin, they will keep the coin as good luck as well. Hey, we're almost at 500 viewers. I do wanna say hi to all of the people who have joined this English lesson about good luck and bad luck or what we call superstitions. Uh if you're new here, there is a subscribe button there. You should click it. Uh let's see here. Um Rod says, I always have a new year's resolution. I always say I will start a diet. I pig out during supper and I forget the next day. (laughs) Yeah, Rod, that's how most, I think that happens for most of us. Um we we decide to be healthy and eat healthy but then we eat too much. That happens quite often. Um Madi says, hi. Hi, Madi. Uh, Siu Wu says, in Korea, it's believed that if a pig appears in your dream, it means you're going to have good luck. I've never dreamt about a pig. So, now I'm going to hope that at some point I do. That sounds like that would be an interesting, uh, be a weird dream actually. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Siu Wu. Sam the Taiwanese. Teacher Bob, a funny question. Even though you are not superstitious, are you scared of going to the graveyard alone at midnight? Yes, I would be. Um so, I think everyone's a little bit superstitious, aren't they, Sam? Um I certainly would not want to visit a graveyard at midnight. By the way, a graveyard or cemetery is where people who have died are buried. Um yeah, I don't know. I would I think I'd be a little bit afraid. I'm not sure why but I guess I'm a little bit superstitious. Uh Rod the Brazilian says hi to Madi. That's cool to see. Corey J says, In some cultures, it's said that if a man and woman see a ladybug at the same time, they'll fall in love. It's true for rainbows as well, I guess. That's interesting. Do sometimes um people who are dating when they go for a walk, one or they're probably both hoping they see a ladybug then if they really like the other person. Um Maudie says, hi, Bob. Are you a good luck or bad luck? I think I bring people good luck. That I'm not superstitious but I think if you watch one of my videos, I think it maybe it'll bring you good luck. That's not been scientifically proven by the way. Julia says, thank you. No problem. Norma says, some people believe that certain plants are good to have luck. There is one called the dollar plant. I could see that. I think there there might be flowers that people consider lucky as well. I didn't find any of those in my research. By the way, when I create these lessons, 80% of it is just from off the top of my head (laughs) and then I do a bunch of research to make sure that I'm actually right. Uh Corey J says to Lolly, uh maybe you could try with your phone Wi-Fi. Oh, Lolly must be having trouble. That's too bad. Julia says, I love when I find money on the way. Yes, I love finding money. Although, if I find lots of money, I'm always worried about the person who lost it. Like, if I find a dollar or two dollars, I I feel, oh, cool. Um but if I find ten dollars or twenty dollars, I feel bad because I feel like somebody is out ten dollars. Uh Annette says, hello, Bob. Do you know um uh, m blank blank e very used in french do you have an equivalent of this rude word for good luck um 
No, I don't think we have an equivalent. I'm not sure what word you're saying. I'm gonna have to look that up later. Um, let's see here. And Zeev says, in Judaism, when you turn 13, there's a ceremony called the bar mitzvah and becoming a man. So, that's good. Yeah, that's true. There are ages in certain uh, religions and cultures where it's good luck or it's just a rite of passage, right? Um, in Canada, um, people are happy when they turn 16 because they can get their driver's license. So, yes, definitely some of those could be considered good luck. Let's see here. Key Park says, please tell me what is the difference between Friday the 13th and Black Friday? Thank you. Uh, thanks a lot. So, anytime a Friday is also the 13th of the month, it's Friday the 13th. Some people consider it an unlucky day. Black Friday is actually a holiday in November in the United States. It's not a holiday in Canada but it's a day where many stores have sales. So, it's really a shopping day. Black Friday is a day where people buy a lot of things. Later this month, there will be many Black Friday sales. So, it's simply it in America, it's the Friday of Thanksgiving weekend and that Friday is called Black Friday. That's the difference. Let's see here. Let's see here. This is not about this is not about superstitions but Layla says, hi Bob, how's it going? I have no question. I just want to say thank you for your efforts. Tu es formidable en temps beaucoup. Well, merci beaucoup. Thank you very much for those kind words and a little bit of French for me to speak. Um, Myrna says, good morning teacher Bob. How are you? What's the bad Oh, what's the difference between bad luck and misfortune? They are the same. Um the same way good luck and fortune like if you're fortunate, it's the same as having good luck um and so bad luck and misfortune are the same as well. Sometimes you have something that it's just misfortune. It's just a bad thing. It's bad luck in your day. Uh let's see here. Pavel says, hi, I think many people just talk about superstitions but don't believe it's popular to say it. I think you might be right. I think we live in a very scientific world and I think people probably have superstitions but they don't want to mention them because it makes them sound a little bit crazy. That could be Pavel. Uh Corey J says, what about stepping in dog's poo? Have you heard of this as a symbol of good luck? Not good luck or I think that would just be an awful thing to do. (laughs) I don't want to talk too much about it but Sometimes when I am out on the farm making a video, I'll accidentally step in something and that's not fun ever. Let's see here. I think Annette's trying to type a word and it's not letting her. So, sorry about that, Annette. Uh Julia says, Lolly Lolly, I think something wrong with YouTube. My connection was bad at the beginning. So, sorry about that. I'm just gonna check mine for a sec. I think it's working well. Yeah, Todd and Dave haven't mentioned anything. So, I think maybe just in certain parts of the world, uh YouTube isn't working well. Um Francesco says, morning teacher Bob. I think that the bulk of those superstitions are imported from my area, the south of Italy. What do you think? I think that North America draws a lot of its history from Europe and parts of Europe. So, many things that we think are common to North America are also usually common to parts of Europe. Uh simply because the countries of Canada and the United States were founded with a lot of people coming from different European countries. So, it's quite possible that all of our North American superstitions uh are actually European superstitions as well. Let's see here. Ha, <laughs> Vitaly says, Hello, Bob from Ukraine. If we believe in bad luck, we have it. Do you think the same? So, there's an idea that if you think you're going to have a good day, if you think you're going to be lucky, if you have positive thoughts, then you will be lucky or the opposite. If you think bad luck is going to happen, then bad luck is more likely to happen. Um so, anyways, uh yes, Vitaly, I think that sometimes it's what you think about and that is what causes it. Hey, let me just make a small change here. I'm going to turn off members only chat and I do want to just stop once more and say uh thank you to all of you who are members. You guys are awesome. Thank you for supporting my channel. Um and let's continue with the lesson. Oh, I see. 
Yes, that happens sometimes, Dave. Nightbot sometimes times people out. Nightbot gets a little overzealous sometimes. Uh, let me see here. Let me do one more question. Uh, Mod Takir. Hi, Mod. I believe it's your first time here, Takir. So it's good to see you. Thank you for being here. In India, number three is similar to 13. Is this the same in Canada? No. In Canada, really, it's only the number 13 that some people consider bad luck. There aren't really any other numbers um, to that. And Winter Wright says, what is the funniest superstition you think? I think maybe the funniest superstition is that weird things happen when there's a full moon. And we'll talk about that in just a moment. Uh, let me get back to my slides. And we will get started on that. So, there's another superstition um, that the groom should not see the bride on the day of the wedding until the wedding ceremony. So, this is still, I think, a common superstition or you could say it's simply a tradition. But weddings, generally, the groom does not see the bride until she walks up the aisle if they're in a church or when she first enters the place where they are getting married. So, the morning of your wedding, you usually do not see the bride. For my wedding, when Jen and I got married, I didn't see Jen until she started to walk up the aisle when we got married. So, it's considered bad luck um, but it's also a tradition in some ways. Um, also, in North America, brides, when they get married, they usually try to wear something old Something new, something borrowed, and something blue. So, even though they are most likely to wear a white dress, they might also wear some small things. They might have an old penny. They might have an older piece of clothing. They might have a small scrap of fabric from something they had as a child. They might have a borrowed piece of jewelry from a family member. And they might wear something blue or have something blue with them as well. It's kind of a funny little phrase. And I don't know if it's considered good luck or if it's just a tradition as well but often they will have something old, something new, something borrowed, something blue. Again, when Jen and I got married, Jen did this. She had her beautiful wedding dress on but she also had something old, something new, something borrowed, something blue. So, um another little superstition that might also be a tradition. Hard to say. Um many people will have a good luck charm. So, a good luck charm is something small that they carry with them that they think brings them good luck. It can often be a piece of jewelry. You see, this is a ring with a four-leaf clover on it. Um but good luck charms can take many, many forms. Uh people will have something in their life that they feel like if they have it with them all the time, it will bring them good luck. It might be a picture of a loved one. It might be a piece of jewelry. It might be when it comes to jewelry, it might be a necklace with a certain pendant. A pendant is something that hangs on the end of a necklace. But definitely, people do believe, some people do believe that carrying a certain item with them all the time brings them good luck and we would call it a good luck charm. As Corey J mentioned earlier, if you found a four leaf clover, you could press it and dry it and you could carry it in your wallet with you all the time as a good luck charm. Some people believe that when the moon is full, bad things happen in the world and um I have to tell you that when there is a full moon, um places like hospitals see more people come in sometimes. So, maybe there's some truth to this but some people believe that when there is a full moon, that strange and crazy things happen in the world. So, not necessarily bad luck but they believe that the full moon um can yeah, can cause people to act strangely. Maybe that's the best way to say it. Um again, sports. So, I mentioned this earlier in the lesson. In many professional sports leagues, uh men will grow beards if they are in the playoffs. They believe that if they they shave, it will be bad luck somehow. So, you will often see in hockey especially, you will see 
at the end of the playoff season, you'll see hockey players with really big beards. Um, um, let me see here. I'm not sure what people are asking. Yeah, anyways, I'll just keep going. Uh, <laughs> you'll see people growing a beard. It happens in other sports as well. Uh, but definitely uh, in sports, people will sometimes grow a beard uh, and they will use uh, that as kind of a good luck charm. So, they think that if they shave, they will lose the championship. Um, I don't gamble but people who gamble and they use dice sometimes will blow on the dice before they throw the dice. Um, it's considered good luck. They're trying to kind of hopefully make it so that uh, they <laughs> they could um, get whatever numbers to come up on the dice that they want. So, they will sometimes blow on the dice. Again, I don't go to the casino. I am not someone who gambles. So, I don't uh, I'm not familiar with this at all um but some people will blow on the dice. I guess if you're playing a board game, you could blow on the dice as well and maybe that is a little bit of good luck. Um a shooting star. So, not directly related to good luck or bad luck but people have a superstition that if you see a shooting star, you can make a wish and that it will come true. A wish is when you want something to happen. So, if you see a shooting star, you could say, you know, I let's say you're looking for love. <laughs> you could say, I hope I meet someone who I can fall in love with. You would make a wish when you see the shooting star. Um maybe you just want money. So, when you see a shooting star, you might say, um oh, I hope I wish that I could be a millionaire. Um so, some people think that when you're walking at night and you see a shooting star that if you make a wish, it might come true. Um let me see here. Um so, we talked about this a little bit. I don't think this penny actually exists. This penny has a four leaf clover on it but some people have a lucky penny. Um by the way, did you know in Canada, we don't actually use pennies anymore? Um they're just they just don't exist. So, when you go to the store, everything comes out to five cents. So, it's either a dollar eighty-five, a dollar ninety, a dollar ninety-five. Um and then we don't pay. It gets rounded up or down. If you pay with a bank card though, you still pay the cents but uh, we don't use pennies. But some people have a lucky penny and they keep it on them all the time as a good luck charm. That's something that some people do. Uh some people think that a rainbow brings good luck or that you can make a wish if you see a rainbow. Um there's also a belief that at the end of the rainbow, there's a pot of gold um but no one ever finds the pot of gold because I'm not sure if you know how rainbows work but you can't actually walk to the end of the rainbow but you might hear someone say there's a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. And then, let's see here. Um this is my last one. There's actually a breakfast cereal for children uh called Lucky Charms. Um and if you look closely at the box, I'm not sure how big I can make this. Oh, that's not a great one. Um but it actually has things like rainbows and four leaf clovers and horseshoes in it. Um it is a very very sweet cereal. We do not buy Lucky Charms for our kids. Uh it's considered a sugar cereal um but there is a breakfast cereal uh in Canada and in the United States called Lucky Charms. Uh and then it's basically they say I think it's frosted Lucky Charms. It's frosted with sugar. Uh they're magically delicious apparently. So anyways, uh lucky charms is another um funny result of a superstitious world. Hey, that's the end of the slides. I know that we're only about 48 minutes in. I will uh move to taking questions and try to finish up all the questions for you. Uh let's get those on the screen. Um kind of an interesting topic. I really really liked doing it. So, let's see here. Um Natalia, two Canadian superstitions I read about today. One, you eat fish off its head. <laughs> I don't know about that. And you do not harvest blackberries after a certain date. Is it true? Interesting. Honestly, Natalia, I have never heard of those two before. I will have to do some of my own research on Canadian superstitions um and see what those <laughs> if those are true. Uh Erica says, hey, Bob, I was watching a movie and they use the phrase May the odds be with you. What's the difference between luck and odds? Thank you. 
So, odds are a mathematical calculation of your chance to win. If you go to a horse race, you will have certain odds, okay? So, if you bet on a horse that has many, many wins, the odds of you winning are higher. So, odds is something that you use in gambling. Um it's very similar to luck but it has a little bit more uh, math behind it. Um you might be talking about the Hunger Games. May the odds be ever in your favor. I think they say that in your game. Basically, it means good good luck. That's what that phrase means. It's a more poetic way to say uh good luck. Hey, let me see here. Um Just looking at where I am. Looks like I'll be able to get through questions. So, let me keep going here. Um Anatoly says, hello, teacher Bob. How many people in Canada believe in superstitions and how old are people who believe? I do think older people probably have more superstitions than younger people but I would have to do some research, Anatoly, to figure that out. It's possible. Um but I'm not sure. Um maybe young people have different superstitions that I'm not aware of. Mohammed Tamer says, I'm very glad to be a member. Well, thank you, Mohammed, for being a member. That's awesome of you. By the way, if you do click the join button and become a member, there's an extra video on Wednesdays. Um there's a few other little things that you get and you get to have a green name in the chat during live streams and you get to participate in the members only chat. Uh, let's see here. Vladislav says, why do you say good luck to someone when he or she is about to do something instead of saying do your best? Saying good luck is as though your skills don't matter. So, Vladislav, you and I are very similar people. Um I don't often say good luck. I do say it. Um but I do often say do your best or try your best. Um when students start writing a test in my class. I don't say good luck. (laughs) I usually say take your time. Do your best. Work really hard on this test. So, that's a great question. Um I think it just depends how superstitious you are. Um so, I do say good luck though sometimes but usually if it's a situation where your skill matters, I will usually say do your best or try your best. Let's see. Next question is from Sita who says, Mr. Bob, thanks a lot for your help and great lessons. I'm not a superstitious person. Today is my day. I was born November 13th. Well, happy birthday. That's very cool and no, I don't think being born on the 13th is unlucky. I think that uh it's just the day you were born. Um Dung from Vietnam says, hi, Bob. Do you know 13 is a bad luck number? For some people, yes, considered bad luck. For other people, um You know, honestly, if we didn't have the motorcycles going by, I wouldn't even know when it is Friday the 13th. Uh let's see. Evenji, Evgeny says, good day, Bob. In my country, to return home is bad luck but to crash a dish is good luck. What do you think? I don't know. Like in our house, whenever we break a plate by accident, usually it just causes us to be annoyed like, ah, who dropped that? That's not good and then we have to clean up all the little pieces. Um but I'm not familiar with that. I will have to do a little bit of research uh about the um Jen. That's oh no, that's okay. Sorry, I just Jen's getting some stuff ready. So, um let me see here. A crash of dishes, good luck. Yes. Sorry, I'm thinking about too many things at once. I do think though that that is the last question. So, anyways, folks, we are done this lesson on superstitions on good luck and bad luck. Sorry, as we get close to the end of the lesson, I start to think about leaving for work. So, sometimes uh Jen and the kids are walking through getting stuff ready. Um so, I was a little distracted. Anyways, um Thanks to Todd and Dave for being here and for uh moderating the chat. Thanks to all of you for watching this lesson. Uh uh, all of a sudden, there's 546 people. I didn't realize that. If you're new here, please click that subscribe button and do remember this lesson, you can replay it later today to practice uh to reinforce what you've learned. Um but there's also a shorter version that will come out in two days where I remove the user questions and it's just the lesson. That's a great thing to listen to once or twice just to kind of practice again what you're doing. Um 
Yes. Uh, Jen Mahdi says hi just so you know. Um and you I'm sure you all say hi. Um one last thing before I go. Rod the Brazilian English teacher will have a new video out on his channel tomorrow. Um I believe it's premiering uh later in the day tomorrow. Uh give that a check. Just search for Rod the Brazilian English teacher on YouTube and you'll find his channel. I see lots of um four leaf clovers which are also I think there's something called a shamrock as well which is looks similar. So anyways, I should wrap this up. Bye to everybody. Thank you so much for watching. You guys are awesome. I hope you have a really good Friday. I know some of you it's already Friday night. I'm always jealous <laughs> but have a good day. Thanks for being here. See you tomorrow at 11 a.m. with another live English lesson. Have a great weekend.